Your Honour, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to the Legatum Institute and I'm Sian Hansen, the Executive Director of the Institute. We're delighted to be hosting the Zambian Vice President, together with Baroness Chalker, on the topic of women as drivers for growth. That is very much at the heart of what we do here. The Legatum Institute is an independent global think tank, an educational charity, and we write and develop policy research to promote prosperity. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the people who support our work, our donors, and particularly Legatum Foundation. We have a number of research areas, but of most relevance to this gathering is our flagship Global Prosperity Index. And you will see many copies of these around the Institute. You're most welcome to take a copy. It includes 142 countries, 99% of global GDP, 97% of the world's population. And for each one of those 142 countries, the index includes close to 90 individual variables across eight categories. What I'm really trying to tell you is there's a lot of data that you can get your teeth into. But the most important thing about our index is that it's a combination of objective and subjective data of which we're very proud because we feel it captures a comprehensive measurement of global prosperity. <laughs> because the Prosperity Index fundamentally is about people. It's about how individuals in these countries experience their lives. It tells a human story. The charts and the graphs, they point upwards, they tell us that overall conditions for that country is improving. But the global, the global Prosperity Index tells us something about individuals and fundamentally how those individuals operate within their own countries. And last year, the Gotham Institute was very proud to publish its second Africa report. Again, you can see copies of these out in the foyer. It's a study of African nations that we included in our Global Prosperity Index. And we held a conference in Tanzania in May of this year where we had the privilege of hosting a number of women entrepreneurs from across Africa. And I have to say, it was fascinating, empowering, and very important to hear their message. Because African women face some of the toughest barriers to prosperity in the world. For example, some African customary laws and social systems have strongly restricted women's access to resources and property rights. Additionally, there's a marked education inequality between girls and boys. And we're certainly looking forward to hearing from her honor, Vice President Inonge Winner. But first, we'll hear from our moderator. Our moderator is Right Honorable Baroness Chalker, who, as former Minister of Overseas Development in both Margaret Thatcher's and Major's governments, is now Chairman of Africa Matters. Baroness Chalker, thank you very much for being here. Your Honour, my Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's a great delight to have been invited to moderate this session. I hope that means that you will hear a lot from Her Honour, the Vice President of Zambia, and very little from me. But I want to <laughs> introduce you to her because she is such a notable lady. I also want to thank Sian and the Legatum Institute for the work they're doing on prosperity. And I can tell you without fear of contradiction that uh, the prosperity index will go up faster the more women who are involved as opposed to the gentlemen. <laughs> Apologies to all. And I'm sure that you will hear this from Her Honour and I might slip in the odd word or two about my long experiences because I've worked in Africa for more than 30 years now and I love the continent. Everybody says what's your favorite country and I refuse to answer because I love it all. <laughs> uh, let me speak of Her Honour Hinonga Mutukawa Wina. She's the first lady ever to be a vice president and therefore 
the highest ranking lady in the government and the history of Zambia. She holds a degree in history and sociology from the University of Zambia and has a passion for community work which dates back to the early 1970s, which is when I first started to get quite involved with Africa. She has served on a number of boards of non-governmental organizations and as president of the Young, Christian, uh, Young Women's Christian Association. She was instrumental there in promoting the women's human rights agenda, which resulted in the Zambian government's establishment of the Victim Support Unit uh, under the police service. She may have something to say about that, we shall see. But she has served the refugee services for Zambia, the Zambian Council of Social Services, the University Teaching Hospital, the University of Zambia Council, Committee on Human Rights, Gender and Governance, and the Women's Parliamentary Caucus. And she was appointed the Minister of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs before she moved to becoming Minister of Gender and Child Development by the late President Michael Sata. There's a great deal more I could say about this lady. I had the honor to meet her earlier this morning, and I'm looking forward immensely to my next visit uh, to Zambia, which we're going to time for February. And together with my great friend, the Minister of Commerce, um, Margaret Mwana sitting there in the front row, uh, I hope that we together can work to bring more investment into uh, Zambia, and particularly more opportunities for women's participation in pushing that investment up. And so, Your Honour, it is my great pleasure to invite you to speak to this the Gartam Institute gathering. The Right Honourable Baroness Linda Choka, Miss Hansen, Executive Director of the Rigatam Institute distinguished members of the various uh, charitable organizations and NGOs, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me recognize the minister in our midst, Mrs. Margaret Manakatwe, Minister of Commerce and Industry from Zambia, and the Zambian High Commissioner to the UK, uh, Mr. His Excellency, Mr. Chikondi. I feel I am home once again. Good. <laughs> Having come from the background of the NGO movement, as you heard from my biography, I feel that uh, I'm among colleagues, among friends, because we speak the same language. Although I find myself uh, a foot or two feet in politics, but my heart uh, still lingers around the world of uh, NGOs and community work and support to the needy and everything else associated with empowering other peace persons who are not as privileged as we are. I am delighted to be here today and encouraged to be in the presence of all of you who in your various ways are championing women's rights and welfare. And thank you for taking time off uh, to come and be with us. Let me hasten to thank the Institute for the warm hospitality. As a public policy think tank whose mission is to help people lead more prosperous lives we are indeed in the right place to deliberate on today's theme of women as drivers of growth. Research has shown that greater gender equality is linked to higher GDP. Ladies and gentlemen, 
about 1 billion women are unable to achieve their full economic potential due to such barriers as A, unequal access to opportunities and the credit, much more so in Africa. Uh, B, lack of sufficient education and training. And C, lack of help from communities. And sometimes um, uh, not very much support mm. from institutions and from government uh, as well. And of course, there are some discriminatory uh, tendencies in recruiting women in employment. Um, in Africa, we still have cultural barriers that uh, uh, stop women from really realizing their full potential. In this regard, the President of the Republic of Zambia must be applauded and commended for advancing the cause of women. In recognition of his efforts, His Excellency the President, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, was this year appointed as promoter of the He for She campaign by the United Nations. Right. In addition, Zambia was presented with an award by the African Union in recognition of the affirmative action the country has uh, taken in, in ensuring women's advancement. Uh, we do appreciate that recognition. And the, the award was given in June 2015 at the 25th US, uh, rather, AU Heads of State Summit that was held in South Africa. We acknowledged the award, but we still have a lot of work to do to advance uh, women. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the commitments we have made as a country include being a signatory to the UN Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, as well as ratifying the Southern African Development Community SADC Protocol on Gender and Development. As you may be aware, the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development is a regional initiative that seeks to harmonize the various international, continental, and regional gender equality instruments that the SADC member states are party to including the Beijing Declaration and the ETS Platform for Action, the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, on the Rights of Women in Africa, as well as the post-2015 Sustainable Development Goals. At the national level, Zambia has developed the National Gender Policy which outlines broad measures for promoting gender equality, including transforming the mindsets of our people, as well as removing the negative attitudes towards women and addressing cultural constraints that tend to lower the status of women in our society. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Women need to be empowered in all aspects. And I'm glad to note that in our midst, there are organizations that are dealing with empowering women in the areas of reproductive health and rights, uh, NGOs that deal with the uh, economic empowerment of women in promoting entrepreneurship, um, in ensuring that the girl child is not discriminated, uh, discriminated against, in ensuring that the girl child is not married off at an early age. These are initiatives that um, will help women to progress 
and be able to create wealth. Allow me to share with you some of the deliberate interventions my government has put in place to promote women. The government, through the Minister of Gender, has initiated a project called Women at Work, aimed at promoting gender equality, female empowerment, and leadership. The project has three main objectives, namely, one, to enhance the leadership capacity and opportunities available for young women aged between 25 and 35 in the areas of management, civic leadership, business and entrepreneurship, with emphasis on women from underprivileged backgrounds. And two, to translate women's participation in the above cited areas into more gender sensitive policies and programs. And three, in the long run, um, in the long term, to measure the impact of these interventions on the attitudes of girls, boys, women, and men. And number four, government um, under the auspices of the Minister of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs is spearheading a campaign against early marriages. Uh, this is a consortium of um, uh, ministries that deal with social matters. And uh, the chiefs are at the forefront in championing the cause to stop early marriages. We engage the, chief, the chiefs because we do realize that they are the custodians of our African culture. And uh, if they don't make changes, then society will continue to experience these cultural uh, barriers that I mentioned earlier. In Zambia, 65% of women drive their livelihood from agriculture. In fact, 65% is a moderate estimation. Mm. The majority of women are engaged in agricultural activities. And that's where empowerment is needed the most so that these women and their families can move out of poverty and be able to create wealth in that area. <coughs> in this regard, my government has put in place measures targeted at women, including provision of extension services through a national in, uh, agricultural input uh, support program. The Zambian government is alive to the fact that one of the major impediments to women empowerment is access to finance and the lack of appropriate skills in financial management. The government is therefore in the process of establishing a women's bank as one of the mechanisms for women empowerment. Yet another initiative the Zambian government has put in place that will greatly benefit women is the business linkages program, whose aim is to foster linkages between large and medium scale enterprises, specifically headed by women. And the Minister of uh, Commerce and Industry is here. She is vigorously supporting women entrepreneurs. Perhaps uh, uh, during these discussions, um, she can highlight some of the activities that government is focusing on. There are also other initiatives, such as the Boys to Men program, that is meant to inculcate the mindset among the youth that men and women are equal partners. In addition, the ongoing Pevi Zambia 2000 project, under which 2,000 kilometers of roads in, in uh, townships is being paved in Zambia, uh, is also empowering women 
uh, with reliable resource, sources of income. We have ensured that uh, a certain percentage of women should be employed to um, pave these roads. Uh, and also a certain percentage of young people uh, should be engaged in this exercise. The project is expected to create 20,000 jobs and empower women and youth with skills and knowledge in road construction and technology. Distinguished guests, challenges in addressing gender inequalities are not absent. As I alluded to earlier, cultural ethos in our various tribes are patriarchal, conservative, and hierarchical, and they confer leadership on men. Perhaps this is a, a stage where Britain has passed over many years ago. Mm. But in our country, we still face these challenges. There is also the wrong notion that women are a weaker sex and their place is at home. Uh, whilst there is also a tendency to favor the boy child at the expense of the girl child. Mm. Such can have a negative effect on implementing policies that promote female leadership. We must therefore ensure as women that we are up to the task, rise to the occasion, and achieve results, especially women who find themselves in leadership, particularly political leadership and in boardrooms. In spite of our various challenges, whether in Zambia or the UK, we should resolve to push on and never relent as women have a lot to offer as well. This event is indeed timely. Coming shortly after the release of a report into gender disparity diversity in boardrooms in the UK, led by Lord Mervyn Davis, which focused on the need to increase the number of women <coughs> at executive level, and the pipeline of future board members. Mm. I understand that the government-backed Davis Review envisaged that a third of all board seats at Britain's biggest companies mm. should be held by women by 2020. Raising its previous aim of 25% by 2015. This is very interesting indeed, and we have a lot to learn from this uh, initiative. You may wish to note that one of the biggest British investments in Zambia, Elvo Sugar, is headed by a woman. Yep. Our Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Honorable Margaret Manakato MP, who happens to be in my entourage today, was at one time Chief Executive Officer of Barclays Bank Zambia and Barclays Bank Ghana. Barclays Bank, as well, as we all know, is a leading British financial institution. The current president of the National Farmers Union for the whole of Zambia, for the first time in history, happens to be a woman. There are many other females in top and other senior positions in the private sector. In terms of political leadership, Zambia has made some strides towards attaining the regional set target of 50% of women in political and decision-making positions. Um, we have a female vice president. <laughs> <laughs> However, there's still a lot of work to be done mm. because in a parliament of 158 members, we only have 23 women. 
So you can see that the challenge is still there. Um, the same in the councils. And uh, uh, the issue of nominations of women as candidates in the elections is an issue that is still determined by political parties. So political parties are the gatekeepers to women's participation, especially in politics. In the judiciary, 60% of high court judges are female. And the position of chief justice is held by a woman. I am delighted to inform you that the key security and constitutional offices are also headed by women. The police service uh, is headed by Inspector General of Police, who is a woman. The Anti-Corruption Commission is headed by a woman. The Drug Enforcement Commission is headed by a woman. The Office of the Auditor General is headed by a woman. The Clerk of the National Assembly is a woman. And also, the Electoral Commission of Zambia is yet another example. It has the highest number of women uh, representation of any electoral commission in the Sadiq region at 60% representation by women. There are also a significant number of female ministers um, and senior government officials. But on the issue of ministers, uh, we still have a way to go. Um, and all these women are gallant women in their own right. Mm. They are making effective contributions to Zambia's national development agenda. Mm. These women are role models to the girl child, and they are breaking through the cultural barriers to balance work, family, and life in general. Mm. They are at the forefront, setting a cultural revolution in our societies, which for centuries has favored men and the boy child. Let me also encourage all of us to use our privileged positions, resources, and capabilities to influence change and they play a significant role in facilitating, supporting, recognizing, and celebrating women as drivers of growth at all levels. And at every stage we are, we should not forget the other woman next door. Mm. Against this background, I would like to share with all of you my new initiative. Mm in recognition of the fact that women at all levels can drive growth. In Zambia, we have a situation where women predominate in the markets. Uh, this is where the majority of them are aching a living. And some have even decided to put some stalls in front of their houses to turn those little places as markets. Um, and as a result of that, you find millions of women uh, on the uh, roadside markets, especially on the uh, highways which lead to provincial centers. And um, statistics have indicated that almost one, one million women are involved in these roadside markets. That's where they uh, create wealth. That's where, from their meager resources, they are able to send their children uh, into schools. But unfortunately, these markets are not clean and healthy for themselves and their customers. So our vision 
is to transform current roadside markets into modern integrated economic hubs for wealth creation and the empowerment of women in their communities. Um, this is mainly to recognize and build upon the entrepreneurial spirit and the determination of the women roadside marketeers and to stimulate the social economic development of women, their families, and their communities. And these roadside markets are major stop centers for people wishing to purchase uh, fresh, reasonably priced, locally produced merchandise of all types, such as vegetables, fruits, and handmade baskets, and woodcrafts. And some of these markets have been utilized for more than 40 years under very deplorable uh, conditions. And women marketeers have limited social amenities within these um, establishments, yet they have persevered and tried to bring up their families on the mega returns from these markets, mm. or shall we say just streets. Mm. The resilience, determination, and focus demonstrated by this ever-growing number of women shows clearly that if given strategic support, facilitation, and empowerment, they can move out of the poverty trap and contribute more effectively to national development. It is a well-established fact that the economic empowerment of women is a key requisite for ending household poverty and promoting gender equality. So it's in this regard that uh, my office and uh, some NGOs and the private sector are teaming together to address the plight of these um, uh, marketeers, uh, so that within this market structure that we want to build with the women, we need to see that there are hygienic conditions, such as toilets, uh, such as uh, water and sanitation um, facilities, um, so that these women can uh, form themselves into cooperatives and be able to access support from government, uh, government institutions, and the private sector. Uh, there's one bank that has volunteered to help uh, to promote financial literacy uh, in these uh, institutions. So we look forward to participation by the NGOs from this country who would like to help in this uh, uh, empowerment process of these women marketeers. So the specific objectives of this program are to empower women marketeers, to enable them to create more wealth, to provide a health and safe integrated trading environment for women, to improve the livelihoods of women marketeers and their families, to upgrade the entrepreneurship skills of the women marketeers, to facilitate partnerships and the linkages with local, regional, and global markets and service providers. Ladies and gentlemen, um, perhaps through our interaction, I have said I would like my minister uh, to shed some light on what we are doing or what her ministry is doing in uh, empowering women entrepreneurs in the country. But for now, I thank you for listening. Thank you.